last time on Master Chef Canada. Oh, it's completely collapsed. After a grueling three-part pressure test, Jonathan was sent home. Bye, guys. But it wasn't over yet. In an exclusive digital showdown, Kagan, Michael V, and Jonathan battled for a second chance. The winner of the MasterChef Canada Redemption is... Tonight, the winner oh! returns just in time for an inspired team challenge. You'll be cooking for seven extraordinary Canadians. These are monumental people. Four minutes out, guys. Four minutes from service. Get him on, get him on, come on! We're on the verge of complete chaos. Come in here! Picturesque Kleinberg, Ontario is the home of the McMichael Canadian Art Collection and the site of the Home Cook's next team challenge. Coming into this competition, I was worried this was either going to make me or break me, and it's definitely making me a much stronger person. As I'm walking up, I can see seven iconic Canadian paintings. I love art. I've been waiting for a creativity challenge. That one. Gorgeous. I'm seeing Canada on canvas. It's inspiring. It makes me feel really proud to be Canadian. Oh! Good morning, home cooks. Morning. 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 Welcome to the McMichael Collection, a world class gallery that focuses on Canadian and Indigenous art, including these masterworks by Tom Thompson and the Group of Seven. The Group of Seven are famous Canadian artists that did mainly landscape. They're phenomenal artists. Today, we want you to celebrate the best of Canada. And you'll do that by creating a menu inspired by the Group of Seven. Cool. And you'll be cooking for seven extraordinary Canadians. Um, and us. That includes Michael. He'll be joining us soon. Each of our seven guests has received the Order of Canada for outstanding achievement and service to our nation. Nice. And they deserve your absolute best. Without a doubt. Recipients of Order of Canada have done things that are so significant. These are monumental people. You'll be creating a three-course tasting menu inspired by the natural themes that distinguish the group of seven, land, sea, and sky. And we provided you with the finest proteins to bring that theme to life. Bison, rabbit, venison from the land, Arctic char, BC spa prawns, and PEI mussels from the sea. And from the sky, Quebec duck breast, pheasant, and quail. My thought process for today is to give these seven people an experience that they'll never forget. Nothing less than spectacular. Eugene and Becky. Because you made the best French omelets in last week's pressure test, you'll be today's team captains. Please come and get your aprons. I'm a leader at heart. I'm a coach. I lead 40 kids at my rowing club. I love being a captain. I'm pretty excited to be a team captain. My strategy is to get people who I know I've worked with before. Eugene, because you made the best dish, you get first pick. I think Eugene is probably going to go with his boys. <laughs> they usually do. The person that I'm going to pick first has worked extremely well with me in the past. He's a ninja in the kitchen, uh, Andy. I'm super pumped to be on Eugene's team. I just can't wait to get started. Becky. I'm choosing this person because we work really well together and we've won two team challenges together, so Marissa. <laughs> I'm giddy and excited to be on Becky's team because we've won two challenges together. Let's make it a three-peat. Eugene, your turn. Uh, the next person I choose is the fastest in the kitchen that anybody's ever seen. I choose Mike G. Choosing Jen. <laughs> All I can remember is being picked last in school for sports teams. Boo. Nadia! Why are you still standing here? I don't know. I think I've definitely earned my keep in this kitchen. Nadia, if you were to get your choice of a team, which one would it be? The blue team. Because I see three very strong women, and Becky is a force to be reckoned with. Nadia, sorry to disappoint you today, but it's not going to be your choice. Could you please join Eugene's red team? Yes. I didn't get what I wanted, but I'm looking at our team, and we have four people, and the other team only has three. So, Becky, you have a huge job ahead of you, and one less team member. So, tell you what, 
we brought one more home cook with us to add to your team. Oh, my God. Who is here? Since the last time we saw you, we invited three home cooks back to compete in a redemption challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those home cooks cooked their way back to earn a white apron. That's amazing. Someone's coming back. Expect the unexpected. Oh Please help us welcome back the final member of the blue team. Kagan. Oh! <laughs> I'm back. Hi, guys. Kagan's back. Congrats. Thank you. It's pretty annoying, but we'll deal with it. It's good to be here. Are you ready to be a valuable member of Becky's team? Absolutely. I'm going to do everything Becky tells me to do. Well, you should, because the losing team today will have to face the dreaded pressure test. You have 60 minutes to plan your menu and plate your first course. After that, your second and third courses must be ready to go out in 30-minute intervals. Don't keep our VIP guests waiting. Understood? Yes. yes sir. Then head to your kitchens because your 60 minutes start now! Go! Okay. <laughs> Woo! Hey guys, one minute to look at all the ingredients and we'll meet at the table. Okay. This pantry is literally like an artist's toolkit waiting to be splashed all over a bunch of canvases. These look stunning. These are really pretty. Yeah, they're really nice. They're beautiful. A lot of fresh produce, a lot of game meat. Rabbit, that's it. That's really cool. Look at that. These are the best ingredients on the planet. And based on the talent we have on our team right now, I don't see us losing this challenge. So the home cooks are in the kitchen behind us, and they have to be inspired by the theme land, sea, and sky. Let's start with land. What I'm thinking is most medicine tartare. So we played it as though it's the artwork. You know the pictures on the prairie ones, where it's like mm -hmm. mountains, really earthy and folly? I was thinking venison. Now, Eugene is the leader of the red team, and we all know that Eugene is probably one of the most creative home cooks we've ever seen in five seasons. So I'm expecting innovation, something that's high concept. So then the air side, what I want to do is the, the quail. Oil, so yeah. I know how to debone it. It's going to blow their minds away that it's deboned on the inside. Now, the possible pitfalls there is that they might be doing too much with not enough time and not deliver flavor. Yeah, so Marissa, I was thinking you do venison, and Kagan, you do duck. Yep. Is that OK? OK. Becky is a woman of few words, but when it comes to food, she is not afraid to speak up, put her ideas on the table, and say, this is what I want to go with. Well, her cooking is beyond her years. I would not underestimate her. So when you say French, do you mean wine? Yeah, wine, yeah. cream, wine. garlic, you yeah. know? Yes, like, yes. This is the first tasting menu in season five. This is their opportunity to really show us who they are. One, two, three, red! Let's go! <laughs> I don't know what that was, yeah. but we're not doing it. The teams have just 60 minutes to create their first course, inspired by the land. Very strong team today. We've gone over the game plan, and we're going to execute it well. With the land, all I keep on thinking are Tom Thompson and Frank Johnson paintings. Dark greens and browns. So I wanted to do venison tartare. How do you feel about that for the venison? I'm a perfectionist. I want to taste everything to make sure it's going to be good. Bringing you the sauce to taste. OK. I haven't strained it yet. More honey? Eugene has like a very, he has a very intricate mind. Yes. Yeah, do we have something other than honey? Do you want more balsamic in it? No, no more balsamic. Lemon? I feel as though it needs a little bit more sweetener. However, uh, not honey. I don't even let it get to me anymore. I know what he's like. I taste a lot of honey in there. You got it. Do you want to start preparing the venison then? Yes, I will start on the venison right away. The first course is a panzered venison with a roasted celeriac puree, romanesco, and a jus. For the first course, I put Marissa on the meat because she's quite strong with red meat. Hagen and Jen are doing the veg prep. Prep. Tons of prep. And then I'm going to start the jus. What do you think about that mix? Can I smell? I'm a little nervous about Becky and Kagan working together. When Kagan left the MasterChef Canada kitchen, he threw some shots directly at Becky. I'm going to salt them first and then press them. Pepper? Just because I need a ton of salt. I have no pepper in here, but I was going to Put some pepper in there. Okay. 
So I'm hoping that Kagan's time off, uh, he ate a little bit of humble pie during that time. My role is doing what I'm told. <laughs> I'm not forcing my ideas on Becky because my strategy is to help her achieve her vision. He seems like he's changed. He's not like as full of himself. <laughs> totally on good behavior right now. Absolutely. 30 minutes in 30 minutes time, the service will be coming. Nadia, how you doing back there? I'm good. I'm starting to get the crackers. Okay, perfect. Oh, amazing. My biggest worry for today is that we have 60 minutes to put forward our first dish, then 30 minutes for the second, and another 30 minutes after that, which means that in the first hour, we need to be working ahead of ourselves. All right, I'm going to start deboning the quail. Yep. I need to start working on this final dish. Deboning a quail is extremely delicate and tricky work. If I don't start it now, we don't have enough time. Eugene, how's it going? Good, I'm working on my second one. Good. The first one's done. Keep pumping, keep pumping. The venison right now, it's cooking away, but we need it to cook faster. I'm butter basting the venison, and we see that these venison are not cooking in time. Toss those in the oven. Do we have oven space? Yeah. So, executive decisions made, throw them in the oven, get them finished there. These are going in the oven. Okay. 10 minutes, you only have 10 minutes to service. The seven prestigious Order of Canada recipients have arrived, ready to enjoy a group of seven inspired tasting menu. I'm gonna need the tartare soon. It's already ready. Both teams must now start plating their first course. Start rolling, start rolling. Becky, I think these are still a little under. The servers will be here in five minutes. How we doing up there, guys? Good. I think we're good. Four minutes out, guys, four minutes from service. I wish we could rest the venison more, but we have no time. Gotta get rid of oh, the blood. is not great. Our venison is bleeding, and I have no choice but to start sopping up that blood because we are not serving our prestigious guests bloody meat. The home cooks are making an artistic tasting menu inspired by Tom Thompson and the group of seven. Gotta get rid of oh, the blood. is not great. We are not serving our prestigious guests bloody meat. Okay, somebody garnish, I'll keep cleaning. You just need two more, Eugene. Let's go, let's go. They're about to come. With the judges and VIP guests eagerly waiting, the teams put their final touches on their first courses. Surface up. Way to go, guys. Round one's done. Great, great teamwork, guys. Great job. Welcome to all of you. Inspired by the group of seven, our first course comes from the land. From the red team, we have venison tartare with a berry sauce. And the blue team has a pan-seared venison on a celeriac puree. Bon appetit. Thank, Thank you. you. Michael, what do you think about the presentation? I thought the red team had the better presented dish. Very colorful, but very inviting. It has a little bit more finesse and polish to it. But I gotta tell you, I like the simplicity of the blue team. It really honored the ingredients. Denise, can I get your take on both dishes? I'm really enjoying the red team, the venison tartare, and the blue team. I love the celeriac puree. I agree with you 100%. So, Lloyd, which dish are you leaning towards more? I think maybe the red team is one up on presentation, but the blue team taste and texture and everything I like better. Shape-wise, I mean, it's kind of cool as far as the paintings go. Uh, my piece of venison looks a great deal like Lauren Harris's mountain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. How's everyone doing, guys? Doing good, Becky. Awesome. Back in the kitchen, the teams are hard at work on the second course, inspired by the sea. Let's keep it up for round two. Our sea course is mussels and a white wine cream garlic sauce. Mussels going in. You OK, Kagan? Yeah, doing great. Right now, I'm feeling really confident in my team's abilities. You want to try some? I think I have, during the course of this cook, started to regain Becky's trust. That's nice. Yeah. We're like a happy family. I love you. Love you. Thanks for coming back. No worries. Thanks for having me. We got this, guys. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. I'm going to have the mussels going on here any second. Over in the red kitchen, they're preparing PEI mussels with bechamel sauce and deep-fried shrimp heads with caviar. Andy, you're going to lead plating on this one, because I have to get back onto uh, yes, the quail. I agree. Andy is taking the lead for the sea dish. He's from Nova Scotia. He knows seafood. I'm a proud East Coaster, and I want to put that on the plate. And I'm going to step up and absolutely nail this. Uh, seafood, stop. Ready? Go. Come over here and take a peek. Quick peek. 
I put some salt with the wine and the shallots and the garlic. The only concern I have about our concept is simplicity. Almost there. Killer beautiful. It is a simplistic menu. Getting the cream ready for the mussel sauce. But if we execute every element, we could blow the judges away with our flavors. OK, we have four minutes, guys. Muscle's coming over. Four minutes. I'm going to start bringing some stuff up front to start plating. I want the seed plate to look like a fisherman's wharf in rural PEI or rural Nova Scotia. The heads that are on this, they have been filled with caviar. Let's move here, let's move. You see the lobster traps, the buoys, the anchor, the ropes. I really drew inspiration from that, and I wanted to recreate that on the plate. I need one of those heads. Hit me a head, hit me a head. Those look beautiful, guys. You're doing good, Kagan. Thank you. Kagan and Becky on plating. Who to thunk it? Looks like the ocean. Oof. Beautiful, guys. This is gorgeous. Down on the wharf. Down on the wharf. Oh. Bon appétit. The second course is inspired by the sea. From the red team, we have a seafood medley of spot prawns, mussels, and Nova Scotia caviar. And from the blue team, we have classic French mussels with a white wine cream sauce. Bon appétit, everyone. Thank you very much. The red and the blue presentation, I, they're very, very similar. Very simple and very pleasant. Going from the taste on the blue team, the cream sauce is MIA. It's not there. I'm not getting that full flavor. There's a lot more technique happening on the red team. They cook the side stripe prawns to perfection. The mussels are tender and succulent. Now, caviar, that's very, very luxurious, very expensive. I would not hide the most expensive ingredient inside the head of a prawn. Am I gonna put a plastic cover over my shoes? Never. You might wanna start doing that. <laughs> Mark. So what do you think of both dishes? They're both fantastic. I am a big fan of prawns, and I'm a big fan of spotted prawns, and those were the best spotted prawns I've ever had. Chef, what are your thoughts? I really like seafood, so I really enjoyed both. I must say the blue team, I think what they did really well was make a sauce that was tasty enough and would stick to the mussel. I mean, it really did have flavor. Two very good dishes from two very good teams. <laughs> We're really going to hustle on the last dish. We got the carrots on, they're starting to braise. Beavers only have to be fried off. The final course is a panzer duck breast, roasted beetroot, and blood orange and maple carrots. Hey, what's the temperature at? 133. Becky puts me in charge of the duck breast. I came here to redeem myself. I need to prove to myself that I can handle the pressure. Stop touching. Messed up once, and I don't want to mess up again. We got this, guys. Strong finish, strong finish. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm working on the seventh quail, and we have less than 20 minutes. I'm not going to be able to do this in time. I'm going to make a decision, Mike and Nadia, work on everything else. You're going to help me dip on the quail. I make a decision. I'm not going to serve seven dip on quails and three with the bones. We need to get these done ASAP. You, what is happening? What? This is raw. How much time is that? 16 minutes. 16 Chef minutes Alvin. left, raw quail. Chef Alvin is losing his mind at us. What are you thinking of? I think you should eat. Pan sear it. Pan sear it now. Come and get it on the pan. Right now. Go, go. Chef yells at us to get them into hot pans. Get them on, get them on, come on. We're on the verge of complete chaos. Two pans, two free pans, come in here. Did you hear that? <laughs> They're in trouble. OK, we got an open pan. Let's, let's take one of these two and divide it up. Bring one of these down here. If we can't cook these quail, we're going to the pressure test. Come on, get in there, now! Oh my god, what have we done? With only one more course to go, things are heating up in the kitchen. Two pens, two free pens, come in here! The red team races to get their quail cooked in time. We have all five burners going. Okay, let's add more butter into the pans, guys. That'll help cook it faster. The only way we'll get this quail done is if we have more butter and are able to baste them. More. More butter over here, please. Yeah, coming now. Blue team, five minutes out. Let's get the plating going. Oh, those look nice. Honestly, the duck is probably the best I've ever done. Beautiful, Kagan. I'm gonna get a duck tattoo, I think, when I go home. Perfect. I got a nice brown on mine. Mine are looking great. Amazing. How are the other ones looking? They're good. They're getting nice and brown. We're doing whatever it takes to make sure this is exactly how we envision. Beautiful. These look good. These look great. And it's coming together. Beautiful, guys. It's a piece of artwork. All right, guys, that's good. Great job, everybody. OK, send them out. 
Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Bring it in. Guys. Team Red all the way. That was a sprint. That was more intense than it needed to be. <laughs> Here we go. For the third and final course, it's inspired by the sky. From the red team, we have deboned quail stuffed with caramelized shallots and pecans. And from the blue team, we have warm spiced duck breast with roasted beets and braised carrots. Bon appetit. I think both teams have done a great job on the presentation. The blue team, I think, is much brighter and more punchy colors. I sort of lean towards that. I love the use of braised carrots, the roasted beets, and the wonderful aroma that comes out from that duck and the warm spices. Very savory, very rich. Well, if I were judging the red team's quail dish on quantity, they wouldn't be doing too well right now. However, the flavors that they've achieved are exceptional. This dish is really beautifully conceived. Sometimes quail is a little hard to eat and this was done really beautifully i have nothing but praise i was so excited by both dishes the color on the blue team was so eye-catching and yet for the red team i really have to say as a girl from the prairies that's what i saw on the plate i saw a part of canada on this dish and i thought that was just really so beautiful because the group of seven was about representing canada in such a beautiful way well, on behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank you for joining us for this dinner and all of your eloquent opinions and feedback. Cheers. 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 Such an honor. Having conferred with their guests, the judges are about to announce their decision. Because today's challenge was inspired by art, the winner will be revealed on the canvas underneath this cloth. Are you ready to find out which team's vision won the day and which team will face the dreaded pressure test that will send at least one of you home? Yes, yes sir! And the winner is... This is the moment I've been waiting for. I've never been more proud. Congratulations, Red Team. You will automatically advance to the top seven in this competition. Top seven again. <laughs> it sucks. It never feels good to lose. I cooked my ass off to come back. I'm not going to waste this second chance. Blue Team, get ready to face an even tougher task. Back in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. It's the day after the team challenge and the home cooks return to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. It feels amazing walking straight up to the balcony, safe from pressure tests. I'm embracing all of this. Not winning yesterday was devastating, but I need to take that energy and that frustration and use it to drive me today. Welcome back, everyone. Red Team, you did a brilliant job. You conceived an ambitious tribute to the artwork, and the guests raved about your presentation and your flavors. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Chef. Chef. Blue Team, it was a close call. Becky, why do you think your team wasn't able to win the day? I think they just had like a better concept and way that they interpreted the art better than we did. Kagan, if you had the choice, would you have introduced a more complex and elevated menu? I like to go high end, so I probably would have done that, but I was committed to helping bring Becky's vision to life. Marissa, was Becky a good leader? Becky was a great leader. She knew how to command a team. It was a sight to behold at such a young age. Well, all of you must now face a pressure test that will send at least one of you home. Tonight, you must replicate the following dish. Colville Bay oysters prepared three ways. First, we have a Japanese-inspired preparation, a sake poached oyster with Asian pear slaw with a perfectly shelled lobster claw. I have absolutely no experience with oysters. It's very out of my comfort zone. The next oyster is served raw, but topped with an intricate mignonette, champagne jelly, red tobiko, and chervil. Feels like there's like three dozen things going on in each little teeny tiny oyster. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. The third and final oyster is our take on Oyster Rockefeller. 
with bechamel, spinach puree, sauteed oyster mushroom, and a blend of cheese and toasted panko breadcrumbs. This challenge is going to be quite difficult. Not only does it have to taste good, but the oysters have to look as gorgeous as we see them. Now please head to the very back of the kitchen. <sighs> There's always a twist. I get back to my station and I see a great big long ruler with a big basket of oysters that have not been shucked. So I'm a little freaked out. <laughs> Behold! For the first time ever, the Master Chef Canada Oyster Shuck Off. Ah, oh, yes. New piece of information is it's a shucking competition. The home cook who shucks the most oysters in three minutes will head straight to safety oh up in the gallery. God. I want to get on that balcony more than anything. If I can make the most of three minutes, that's all I need. Behold, for the first time ever, the Master Chef Canada Oyster Shuck Off. Ah, oh, yes. The home cook who shucks the most oysters in three minutes will head straight to safety oh my up in the gallery. God. I'm extremely familiar with oysters. I eat a lot of them, but I have no idea how many oysters I could shuck in three minutes. I have zero experience shucking oysters. I'm just hoping I don't stab myself in the hand. Essential to shucking the oyster properly is disconnecting the oyster from its shell. I think that I've shucked probably thousands of oysters in my lifetime. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Never shucked an oyster before, because they're kind of gross and slimy. We'll be examining your work, and poorly shucked oysters will not count towards your final total. You have three minutes to shuck, and your time starts now! Let's go, guys. Let's go. Guys, guys, come on. Shuck like your life depends on it. I can't think about time. I can't think about what anybody else is doing. I'm trying to repeat the motions. In, turn, slice, done. Higgins made a great start. He's got three oysters shucked, opened, and ready. Let's go, Marissa. Marissa's right behind. Let's go, Marissa. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's go. Quick, quick. And Becky's doing well, Becky's too, in the back there. Good. Jan's only got two. You guys are killing it. Remember, the oyster's got to be perfect. If it's no good, toss it out. Kill it, right there. Right 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 let's go. Let's go. Marissa is in the lead right now. Come on. Yes. Come on. I realize I am too behind, and I think I got to go faster. Go, go, go. One minute. Get him open. One more minute. Go. Come on, Marissa. You got this. Kagan is fast, so I'm um, nose to the ground. Just get her done. Marissa and Kagan and now neck and neck. He's got this one more. 30 seconds. Come on, 30 seconds. Yes, come on. Come on. Keep Keep going. Going. Yes, go, push. Go, 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 go. Push hard. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Kagan's actually getting faster with every oyster he opens. Wow. Very impressive. I have 15 oysters. That was intense. I've got uh, 13 oysters ready. All right. I know I've got more than a couple, so hopefully they all look good enough. I know I didn't do the best, but I did the best I could. First eight oysters I've ever touched in my life. I shook eight oysters. The judges will now take a closer look at the home cook's shucked oysters. Now, this is nicely shucked. Thank you. Any oyster that is not properly released from its shell will not be counted. Okay. After examining your oysters, we're ready to announce the results. In third place, with five perfectly shucked oysters. Jen. And also with five. Kagan. <laughs> That's 
right, Kagan. Most of your oysters were unfortunately still connected to the shell. I didn't even release them. Uh... Becky and Marissa taking quality issues into account. Today's winner on the Oyster Shuckoff, who will go straight up to the gallery, is Marissa. I did it. Woo! I can't get up those balcony stairs fast enough. Oh, yes. I feel at home up on that balcony. It's where I belong. The rest of you take a good look at your oysters and select the three best. Take those three oysters to your station to complete this challenge. Let's go, Becky. You will have 35 minutes to complete this challenge. And your time starts. No! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Hustle, 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 guys. I'm feeling pretty terrified about this pressure test. I'm going to fight as hard as I've ever fought in my life for this. I'm not going home. Good hustle, Jen. Good hustle. There's so many ways that you could prepare oysters. One of those ways is a poached Japanese preparation. And they need to be very, very careful with that. Just kind of going with the flow here. I don't want to see them dropping an oyster into a roaring pot of boiling sake. It kills the flavor of the sake, and it will destroy the oyster. It's nice. True redemption is getting back into a pressure test and coming out alive. Moving on. This pressure test is the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Kagan, how are you? I think I uh, kind of embarrassed myself a little bit in that last challenge, so I'm looking for redemption number two. You opened a lot of oysters. Yep. But only a few of them were successful. Um, I'm going to learn from that. I think the biggest challenge here is really the pressure, so it's going to come down to who performs best under pressure today. One thing is for certain, you are a fighter. You don't give up. Thank you. Can't wait to see what you do. They also have to prepare a raw oyster, and there's nothing simple about that task. A beautiful, classic mignonette, which is usually done with red wine, shallots, very clean, very fresh. You gotta make sure the mignonette does not have too much acidity. It has to be perfectly balanced. Lots of potential for mistakes here. Does it smell good, Becky? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you doing? All right. First pressure test. Nervous? Uh, not really. Not really. So, you confident? Yeah. Well, have you ever cooked an oyster before? Uh, no. No? And you're not nervous at all? No. Cold as ice. I tell you, don't be nervous, but you should always care. Remember that. Yeah. All right? You're a savage, we Becky. Go, you're a savage, Becky. I want the judges to know that I can handle the pressure. I do have emotions, I just don't show them. Ten minutes, you have ten minutes left. The Rockefeller is everyone's favorite, including me. First of all, get a nice, rich bechamel sauce with spinach. Very careful, get that taste right. Try, get that in the oven right now. You are going to broil it inside a hot oven. Find the next gear here, guys. Jan, you're a machine. Yeah. Jan, you're a machine. One of the key elements of that poached Japanese preparation is the lobster claw. Poach until it's just cooked, and then the careful procedure of gently cracking it and removing it whole from its claw. Yes. Here comes your moment, Becky. Oh, Becky. Hi there, Jen. Hi, Chef Michael. Sorry I'm not looking at you. I've never uh, done this before. So Very this gently with it. Deep breath. Gently, gently. Yes! 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 <laughs> you deserve that. Thank you. So we'll let you carry on. Good luck. Good girl. 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 I am my biggest obstacle years ago. I had the chance to go to cooking school and I didn't. I just didn't go because I thought, why would they want someone like me? But I'm done standing in my own way. 
Let's get those oysters plated. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, Becky, yeah, Becky. It's so important to get the right ingredients on the right oyster. Kenyon has a tendency of forgetting things. Look at the oyster. He shucked the most, but he forgot to release them. Let's go, Kagan. I need to take my time with this. If I rush it, oyster's gonna look terrible. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hands up! I look at my dish and I realize that my mushroom is out of place. That mushroom not being in the Rockefeller oyster might send me home. The judges will now taste each home cook's oysters three ways. Jen? Hi. Presentation is not bad. The lobster claw came out whole. Delicious oyster. Thank you. Good vinaigrette dressing. And the umami of the seaweed is coming through nicely. Nicely done. Thank you. Jen. Hello, Chef Alvin. I'm going to try the Oyster Rockefeller because this is a classic and one of my favorites. The oyster is perfectly cooked. The mushroom should be cooked a little bit more thoroughly okay. because we want to get that different texture. It's there, but it's not doing its work. Okay. In my humble opinion, the most difficult oyster is this one, the raw oyster, because you have nowhere to hide. Mm. Wow. You see that? Mm-hmm. What is that? That's peppercorn. It's a lot of peppercorn. Remember, cooking is all about those fine details. The pepper is too coarse. It's actually taking over the entire flavor of the oyster. Hello, Kagan. Hello, Chef Michael. Looks like that oyster mushroom jumped ship. It was supposed to be hanging out over there. That's right. The lobster is cooked very, very nicely indeed. Lovely light dressing, works well together. It's not a perfect dish. I hope you've done enough to stay here. Good luck. So, the raw oyster. The jelly is nice, it's intact. The shallots, they're perfect. Thank you. The pepper, the jelly, they complement one another beautifully. Wonderful. Thank you. Even though a component was missing, the oyster was cooked perfectly. The sauce tasty and was rich, and that's what Rockefeller should be. The unshakable Becky. Looks like you carbon copied the plate that we showed you. Well, let's see how your raw oyster tastes. The mignonette is expertly done. Good heat, the peppercorns are finely ground. It complements that oyster beautifully. Sauce, good flavor, well seasoned. Great combinations of the cheese, the breadcrumb, and finally that mushroom. This oyster Rockefeller, it's one of the best I've ever had. Wow, Very well done. <laughs> Thank you. Becky, you were the only one that had that oyster in the grasp of the pincers of the lobster, as was shown. Fresh, crisp, and crunchy, the way it should be. Nice seasoning on the lobster claw, but it is, in my opinion, slightly underdone. You're not making it easy. I don't feel safe right now because everyone had ups and everyone had downs on their dishes. It's going to be very, very tough. 
and I think it's going to get down to counting the flaws. I want to be the one who's saying, I don't want to go home. I don't, I'm not ready to go home. There's two home cooks that are in the bottom and almost equal in their mistakes. It's anybody's game at this point. It can be the tiniest little misstep and you get sent home. Let's go deliver the news. Let's do it. Three oysters, three different ways, three incredibly talented home cooks. But one emerged as a front runner. Becky, congratulations. Thank you. I feel like I deserve to be in the top seven. I have that fight in me. I showed today. Thanks. Jen and Kagan, we debated long and hard over your oyster dishes and faced one of the most difficult decisions we've ever had to make. Both of you made mistakes, and we had to consider how those mistakes affected both presentation and flavor. Taking everything into account, we have no choice but to send home. Jen. Kagan, please head up to the gallery. Jen, we have no doubt that you're one of the finest home cooks in this country. You've made every moment in the MasterChef Canada kitchen count as a cook, as a team player, and as a friend which is why you're such a great role model for your daughter, Scarlett. Now come on up and say goodbye. Oh my God! I may not be the next Master <laughs> Chef Canada, but my dream is never gonna die. I love cooking. I've always loved cooking. That tastes fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> and now I'm gonna do something with it and make it a career. Perfect, thank you, ma'am. Stop being scared to do what I wanna do. The Red Team! Yeah! Scarlett is going to be so proud of you. Thank you, guys. She's going to know that she doesn't have to grow up doubting herself. She can follow every dream she's ever had. Next time, please welcome the cast of Kona Gas. What? <laughs> Brent Butt is my favorite comedian. <laughs> the top seven come face to face with some comedy connoisseurs. So does this mean we're safe from elimination? Hi, Eugene. I am making chicken and waffles with a pat of foie gras on top. Are you single? I wish she was one of the judges.